This is Miss Sebastian, your art teacher. I'm so excited you're going to be with me today. And I have some awesome first projects for us to do in the art class. Before we get started on that, let me introduce to you my little buddy. This is Shishi. He's my Japanese chin. Mwah. I love him so much. And he loves me too. In fact, that's a great thing about dogs in general and pets is that they just love you unconditionally. And when we're talking about art, art has many reasons to make it. Um, sometimes it's to express ourselves. Sometimes it's to try new things and expand our growth. Uh, today's lessons, I really want to have the focus of optimism. Optimism means having a hopeful outlook on now and the future. And in this sort of world today that we're living in, we need more love and optimism and hope. Third, fourth, and fifth are all going to be on pop artists. And pop is really unique in the art movements in that those artists usually use lots of beautiful, bright colors in their artworks and will usually have uh, a lot of hopeful, optimistic messages too. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on those by watching a quick presentation first. These projects are all going to be for a fundraiser that we do at our school. It's called Square One. They will send you free sticker sheets of your art and you can also order other things too. And here are a few do's and don'ts. Try to fill up your papers with beautiful colors. Don't make any images too close to the edge. Don't forget to include your name and don't break copyright laws for this lesson. That means don't steal other people's artwork. Today, we're gonna to learn about the optimistic pop artist, Chris Uphuse. He's a contemporary artist. Contemporary means that he's, this is what he looks like today. This is the art he's making today. He is an artist of the moment. He's probably making art somewhere as I talk about this right now. And um, next to him is his wife. She actually helps him. And artists a lot of times have helpers. Uh, a lot of times artists will draw out the lines and then if they want certain colors filled in, they'll have an assistant help them. And I think that's what her role is, is that she, he, she just helps to fill in colors um, under his direction, of course. And then that's their dog. Oh. They love dogs too. I love them. All right, so <clears throat> what makes an optimistic artwork? Well, something that brings a smile to your face, makes you feel good inside, has that hopefulness in the future or in present day. So let's go ahead and look at more of his artwork. Um, right before we do that, let's just talk about our objectives. We're gonna appreciate, appreciate the art of Chris Uphuse understand the significance of pop art, which is the movement he belongs to in art. That means there's a group of artists that kind of work in the same style or idea or theme. Something is unifying them. And <coughs> <coughs> you're going to create an up influenced artwork. So that means you're going to create an optimistic artwork. And just like all the pop artists use bright, colorful, uh, designs and pictures in their artwork. We're going to kind of borrow that brightness and happiness too and put it in ours. And we're going to apply unity to your art as well. <clears throat> so pop art is an art movement that emerged in the 1950s and flourished uh, really up until today. It was born in the United States of America and Britain. We kind of share that honor. And it draws inspiration from popular everyday things. That's where the pop comes from. So taking uh, things that are in ordinary life, whether that's things you see in the grocery store, whether that's things you see when you're driving in your parents' car down the road and you see a billboard, uh, those have been designed by artists. So labels and packaging and things that we just love like video games, or in this case, uh, it's going to be Roy Lichtenstein took a comic book panel from a comic book, just the, the squares that were featured on the pages, and enlarged it and added his own spin on the colors and the messages. But it's supposed to make you think of comic books when you look at it. <coughs> 
You may have heard of Andy Warhol. He's kind of the father of the pop art movement. And he said, hey, you know what? Art is everywhere, including Campbell's soup cans. So he took that idea and made artwork with it, saying that everything that's designed by people or has art in it or is beautiful. Let's celebrate everyday popular things that we can all see. You don't have to go to a museum to see beautiful artwork. And that's what I feel like when I look at this artwork by Andy Warhol. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> when I was a little girl, uh, there was something called scratch and sniff stickers. <gasps> do you guys still smell those? You do? <gasps> if you do, maybe turn to your neighbor uh, and tell them your favorite scented, uh, you know, scratch and sniff sticker. Yeah, mine's lemon. Okay, now, <clears throat> uh, I feel like he took inspiration from those stickers and he would make those into fine art. So look at all these crazy little fruit guys here that you might see on those stickers. They have happy faces. They have um, awesome, um, awesome eyes and mouths that are optimistic. Ugh, I just love this. Um, and so normally when you think of something that is maybe a little scary, I don't know if you've seen Over the Garden Wall with the little pumpkin people, it's a little scary, but I love that show. And you can make it happy and optimistic and cute. So here he's taking little jack-o'-lanterns, put happy faces on them. He's expressing himself, things that he may find interesting or like. Uh, and popular everyday things like jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween and making them into optimistic pop art. So what's his most iconic artwork? His most iconic artwork is this. Really, uh, when you see happy hearts and clouds and rainbows and butterflies and bumblebees, that says Chris Uphews to me. This is just a fun, colorful, happy picture. Here he is, um, and you can see that in this, this is a mural, so it's on the side of a building. So that's what a mural is. It's a large painting. And you can see that it looks like here, he does the block coloring first, and then he'll go back and add in the outlining and the optimistic faces. Here he is here, working on some of those faces. This would be the first shot on the left when he's just getting started. And then this would be on the right, a, a further along shot uh, where he's kind of finishing up adding those details. And here is, oh, look at that mushroom. Oh, look at the rainbow underneath it. I just love that. Look at the little ladybug on the top. Oh my goodness. And pretty flowers. You know, if you don't want to do hearts and rainbows and flowers even though Chris up pews man he's a dude he likes that stuff you know you could do uh your favorite sports ball balls maybe it's going to be a football or a baseball or something like that for your artwork look at this he even has shoes oh my goodness this is outside of a storefront he's done a, this wonderful window so in art, we talk about principles and elements of design. Uh, and one of those is called unity. So how does Chris Uphew unify his artwork? Well, unity is also like harmony. What are the common elements that are repeated in each artwork so that when you look at a group of them, you would know those were all Chris Uphew's artwork. So let's think about those things that Chris does that we can look at this one and go, oh yeah, that's a Chris Uphews artwork. Can you think of a few? Maybe turn to your neighbor and tell them what you think. All right, raise your hand if you have optimistic uh, faces, if you said that. Raise your hand if you said they're fruit. Raise your hand if they're bright and colorful. 
Raise your hand if you thought that reminded you of those scratch and sniff stickers. Let's look at the next one. Now think to yourself on this one what the unifying elements are. Now use your finger and do a little check in the air if you got these. Hearts, optimistic faces, and notice how simple they are. It's not real detailed or elaborate. You wanna keep that in mind when you do your artwork too. Rainbows, bumblebees, flowers. All right. Now for your assignment. You're gonna draw out something, whether it's a heart or food or some other item that you're interested in, and add optimistic eyes and mouths. And then we're gonna add some of those unifying elements so that we know, oh yeah, they must have been inspired by Chris Uphughes. Maybe rainbows, flowers, bees. We're gonna outline it in Sharpie. We're gonna add some color, maybe in markers. Um, <clears throat> so those are the way, those are our first steps that we're gonna do. And we are definitely going to be uh, working on those today. So let's get on to my studio desk so I can kind of show you how to start planning this out. All right, we're at our studio desk and we will need the following supplies for our lesson. We'll need our paper, we'll need markers, pencil with an eraser, and a Sharpie for this. Okay, to get started for our lesson, if you haven't filled out this top portion, please go ahead and do so. And so um, you're gonna put your first name, one letter in each space, and your last name. That happens to be mine. Our school is Holly, H-O-L-L-E-Y dash Navarre N-A-V-A-R-R-E and then we're going to put intermediate I-N-T E-R M-E-D-I-A-T-E -E. you're going to put what grade you're in third, fourth, or fifth and your teacher's name not my name, that would be your classroom teacher's name. And then we're ready to start drawing. I just wanted to take a moment and also say that you don't want to break copyright laws for this lesson. Um, so what does that mean? You don't want to steal someone else's exact thing and put it in your artwork. Um, the company that's going to be making these into products uh, won't remake them if you make something look identical like Spongebob for example. Uh, the person who created Spongebob whenever you buy a t-shirt or you buy a um, let's say a folder that has Spongebob on it he gets something that's called a royalty which means he gets a small portion of what you paid for paid to him. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking oh <clears throat> if we do some fruit and hearts with um, expressions, isn't that uh, breaking copyright laws? Well, you can't really copyright things like fruit or hearts or emoji faces to the, to the most part. Some emojis may be uh, limited copyright, but I think we're going to be safe in doing something like this. So I'm going to start off um, lightly. And if, hey, if you want to flip your paper over to the other side and do some practice on here. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like, oh, maybe I'm gonna do a little cherry. Yeah, I like that, I like that. And then, ooh, what about facial expressions? So, it just so happens, I have this right here that'll give you some different silly facial expressions with eyes and mouths. So, if my, um, if you need to go back and pause on this picture so you can look at some different options and choose one, you certainly can go back and do that. All right, so what kind of face expressions am I gonna do for this one? I think I'm gonna do some big eyes here. Uh, and you know, when we draw in pencil, especially when we're planning something out, that's a little highlight there, 
um, we can uh, always go back and easily erase. So I've drawn lightly, and you can see how easy that stem erased. But if I were to press super hard, and then I tried to go back and erase it, you can see that it is very difficult to go back and erase that. Um, marker will help cover up a lot of things if you don't use yellow, for example. But if we draw lightly to begin with, it makes it super easy to go back and um, erase those if we don't like the way they're positioned. That's a pretty silly face there, isn't it? Um, again, I feel pretty good about my drawing skills and what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. For this lesson, you really want to go nice and big because um, we're going to be using Sharpies to outline things. And if we don't go nice and big, it's going to be very difficult to outline it so that um, we will be able to um, see your details. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. And then we'll give them that goofy smile again. And then this one we'll do a little differently. Guys, little tongue out there. And then maybe I'll put a couple of nice big hearts. Again, if you're not the best heart maker, good idea to practice on the back. And then maybe I will do some nice rainbows to kind of fill in that space. And hey, you know, maybe we'll put some facial expressions on these uh, faces too. Maybe this one's got some glasses. All right, so I feel pretty good about this. I'm gonna move on to the next step. I'm gonna outline everything with a black Sharpie that you're gonna be given. So remember how I said earlier not to make anything too itsy bitsy teeny weeny? So let's say I had decided to make a little tiny cherry here and put his little eyes right down here and his little smile. And then I take my Sharpie and I start to kind of, oh, 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 that doesn't look so good. See how the, everything just kind of blob together because the Sharpie's too fat for small details. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. All right, the next step would be to color it in. And so we're gonna use markers for this. And here we go. Also make sure that we put our name in the picture somewhere. You can write your name in cursive or you can print your name and best to do your first and last name. So I'm just going to put my, um, choose a, sp a spot to put it. I like to do mine near the bottom. So I'm going to just do my name. And then do a little self-evaluation check. Um, is there something else I can do um, to make this picture even better? Um, you know, I've got some great balance and symmetry going here, 
maybe I could do a few little of those flowers that you sometimes saw in his pictures to kind of continue that balance. You know, maybe I'll put one of these little bees up here. So at this point, I have to make a decision. If I have loads of time and I really want to, I could color in that background. Um, but if you feel that your picture looks good with white here and you've got it mostly colored in with different objects like I do, you could just leave the background white. Um, that's going to be a personal preference and one that you may want to check with the teacher. All right. I hope you have fun and get to making great art.